Uh, so, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrzej Zsamboki. I work for Bosch in Hungary with Zoltan and uh, Zhao. Uh, Zhao is in Germany. And in this presentation, I will show you a way to extract uh, realistic car funding model parameters uh, from drone videos. Uh, let's start with our motivation first. Uh, and our motivation is twofold. Uh, first, uh, the default parameters are simply not realistic enough for, uh, for uh, most traffic uh, simulation situations or scenarios. These are just discrete values, not distributions as one would feel, uh, describe the traffic flow more accurately. And the second point is that uh, even if we have reliable, accurate parameters for our model, we may not use these parameters in a different model. It can also happen that the other model doesn't even have the same parameters, for example, a parameter called acceleration. Or it can also happen that the other model interprets acceleration or deceleration differently. So to solve that, we came up with a six step process. You can, so, you can see it here and I will talk briefly about all the six steps. Let's start with the first one, the drone video processing. In 2018, Bosch contacted an external company, which is a German company called IT Designers Group. And we handed them a bunch of drone videos from intersections in Stuttgart, Germany. They uh, used uh, object detection uh, on all of them. And uh, the result, their output was trajectories for each car in the drone videos. After some quality uh, iterations, uh, the result was quite good. I would say more than 95% of the vehicles were correctly tracked and recognized throughout the, all vi throughout the video. After we got the results, the next step was to create a digital representation. Of course, naturally, we used Sumo's NetEdit tool for that. And uh, one important point was uh, that we had to create this uh, representation as accurate as possible. And for that, we didn't use a satellite image or we didn't use a steel frame from the drone video, but we used the trajectories from the drone video. You can see a heat map plotted over the network. And uh, most of the times it's uh, unambiguous which lane a vehicle chose uh, in the drone video in reality. And this step was needed because the third step is map matching. Map matching is, of course, a useful tool if you would like to eliminate the lateral errors, the lateral movement within a lane for a trajectory. But uh, here, this is just a positive side effect. Uh, this is not uh, the reason we did this. The reason we did this was to transfer the X and Y, the latitude longitude coordinates to some something that uh, Sumo can directly interpret, which is a lane ID and position along that lane pairs for each point. After we did the map matching, I have set up a test uh, calibration, which worked but was too slow. The reason for that was that uh, I have inserted all the vehicles from the drone video to the simulation in Sumo, moved all the vehicles except the one that was being calibrated by hand, so to say, and moved them by uh, moved them with Tracy. Uh, because of the too many vehicles in the simulation that were being moved by hand, uh, this calibration was too slow. One vehicle's calibration would have taken likely over a day. To solve that, we came up with the idea of reducing the number of vehicles in the sumo simulation. The minimum number that can be present in such a calibration is, of course, two, because we can't eliminate the follower vehicle, we can't eliminate the vehicle that is being calibrated, and we need its leader. It's not a problem if the leader changes uh, because of lane changes uh, 
or because uh, something happens in the in the simulation because uh, we can simply reposition the leader and it won't be a problem and of course the followers the vehicle that that is being calibrated its uh, dynamics its uh, driving is commanded by the carfolin model that we used for the calibration the next step was a filtering step that is needed to select the most promising vehicles from a from the trajectories. It can happen that a vehicle enters the drone video at uh, 50 kilometers per hour and it exits with 50 kilometers per hour and not, nothing really happens. We can't calibrate the acceleration or deceleration of a car following model if, uh, if a vehicle doesn't accelerate or decelerate. It's, uh, it's just pointless. To select the best vehicles and not waste computational resources, we have uh, used a paper that uh, hopefully you can see here on the bottom that described six unique segments with a trajectory. Two out of the six represent two kinds of accelerations. One is acceleration with a leader and the second one is acceleration without the leader in a free flowing state. The third and fourth kind of segments are moving with a constant speed when the acceleration is below a certain threshold. Uh, one has a leader and the other one doesn't. And the last two kinds of segments doesn't have a pair when there is a leader because, uh, sorry, when there is not a leader, when there isn't a leader, because a deceleration or a standstill can't happen in a car following model without a leader vehicle or without a red light uh, commanding the follower to do so. Uh, approximately 10% of our trajectories had six segments. These are called complete trajectories. But uh, to increase the number of vehicles that we can use, uh, we have also use the four and five segmented trajectories. Finally, we could arrive to the calibration step. As I have already mentioned, we have used Tracy to move the leader vehicle with a Python script and compared the trajectories from the drone video. Uh, you can see a dummy drive off event on the left. This is the red line. And uh, we have generated uh, random parameter sets. Uh, you can see the results for these uh, with gray lines. The objective was to minimize the root mean squared error between the red and the gray lines between the original and the calibrated trajectories. The optimization algorithm was one called covariance matrix adaptation evolution strategy. It is similar to a conventional genetic algorithm, but it can adjust the area of the search. It can zoom on to better parameter sets, so to say. And if it uh, gets stuck on a maybe just local optimal, it can increase the search area automatically. And maybe it can exit this local optimal and find a better global solution. After the calibration, let's, uh, oh, sorry, first uh, look at this slow animation as the iteration number on the top left increases. The, the gray lines tend to converge to the red line and the root mean squared error gets minimal. And yes, next step is finally the evaluation and uh, I will share some thoughts about what's next regarding this uh, work. We have only evaluated one video with the intelligent driver model and we have used six parameters. You can see these parameters and their distributions on the bottom. Out of uh, all the calibrated vehicles, 86% uh, had a root mean squared error less than two and a half, and roughly 60% had the root mean squared error less than one. Of course, all the calibrated parameter sets were better than, I mean, than if we compared the trajectory to, to the 
simulation ran with the default parameter sets. Out of the six parameters, I would say that four, the acceleration, the tau, and the speed factor and the mean gap have a quite well-defined uh, distributions with the acceleration and tau leaning to the left, and the speed factor and mean gap being uh, more symmetrical. Uh, the deceleration and the delta parameter, which is uh, an acceleration exponent in the IDM equation, needs uh, further research. Uh, one typical problem was that although the root mean squared error was low, uh, the parameter, and it could be almost any of these parameters, was way too high or too low. Of course, we can't have a negative acceleration parameter value, but uh, an acceleration of, let's say, 10 meters per second is unrealistically high, although the calibration concludes that a 10 meters per second squared uh, parameter is a good parameter. Uh, it's, uh, unreal, it's unrealistic. We can't use that. And uh, this is where we need common sense to filter out uh, results that are good, uh, that seem good because of the root mean squared error, because of the result, but uh, we can't use those. Uh, what's next regarding this research? We can try to create vehicle type distributions with clustering algorithm with machine learning. Right now, most people use arbitrary splits in the vehicles. For example, they, they make uh, aggressive, defensive and average driver groups, but uh, these may be too arbitrary and may not describe the drivers well. It's possible that with the clustering algorithm, we can come up with better splits. It would be also interesting to compare different times of the day from the same intersection, as we have a few videos from this same intersection too, and uh, also compare the results from the same uh, uh, time of the day, but uh, from different locations. Another interesting topic would be to calibrate lane change models, especially on highways, on congested highways. On the final slide, you can see our conclusion that uh, the method we are proposing is, uh, is able to extract realistic parameter sets from the draw videos. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me now in the chat or, or with your mic, or just write me an email. You can see my email address below. Thank you for your attention.